It's my privilege to have Martin Reeks Williams with us, who is in uh, Ethiopia, and you can tell us a bit more in a moment. Welcome, Martin. Thank you. And uh, here from, yeah. we have Alice, who's social media, and myself, Richard Bromley, the mission director. So, Martin, tell us a little bit about where you are. Um, geographically, um, I'm in uh, Addis Ababa, in the heart of Addis Ababa. In, uh, well, actually, it used to be the heart. When we built the church here, it was very close to the centre, but the centre has moved south. But we're still quite close to quite a few institutions and the uh, Addis Ababa University and so on. Uh, lovely little compound. It's like a little oasis in the middle of the city. And I've realised that in the last year, we've because we've had a big increase in the number of people coming here to do the wedding photos. So they come during the week, put on their kits and do their photos here. Several a week because uh, they've seen their friends it's all advertised by social media uh, sort of spontaneously it's made me realize what a treasure it is this little church hmm. and this little compound is actually quite something so I mean, i've never been there you say this little church uh how big is it how many people attending what's it like is it western or a local i think it's built a little bit in the english style um fairly simply uh, it would seat se 120 reasonably comfortably, but not much more. So it may become the cathedral for the new diocese. It will be one of the smaller cathedrals of the Anglican Communion. Um, and we have a memorial at the back of the church to not the people, but the regiments that served in the campaign to help Haile Selassie recapture the country from the Italians in 1941. A campaign in which Bishop Anthony's grandmother was involved. She drove a troop transporter all the way up from northern Rhodesia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So you mentioned Bishop Anthony, and there's been a whole lot of changes lately. So tell us about the last few weeks for yourself. Uh, at the end of October, in, a, in an airport hotel near Cairo Airport, Bishop Archbishop, uh, Archbishop Sammy formally asked me to be bishop of the new diocese in the Horn of Africa. So we're in a transition, creating a new province. And there has to be an election, both here and in Gambella in the West for the country, by May next year. And until that point, during the transition, Archbishop Sami may appoint bishops. So I'm appointed at the moment, and I have said I may or may not be a, a candidate for bishop next year I, I would need to sort of go before the lord with that and so on afresh if that was wished uh so that yeah that meant there were lots of new things to think about like what does a bishop wear i had to have a long zoom call with bishop anthony to explain all these terms like rochard and shamir and crozier and their significance and where i could buy them and so on um there's been quite a journey of learning a whole lot of things i never thought i'd need to know <laughs> and you mentioned two areas of work uh, so tell us about one challenge and one encouragement i think uh when you start in a new place it takes a time for people to trust you and for people to know you to feel you have some friends in the new place and that's been i think a slower process than i would have expected Partly the nature of the city, it's very, it's become very large, it's harder getting around. There aren't, um, people tend not to go out in the evenings as much. So there, there aren't the natural ways of getting to know people. So I've done a very traditional Anglican thing, I've done a lot of visiting and imposed myself on people and said, when can I come and have a meal with you? And got to know people that way. But there haven't been the same level of social interactions, which you might get in a normal parish church. So I think maybe encouragement is I'm feeling I'm known and trusted, yeah. possibly beginning to be loved a little bit. <laughs> um, but that these things take time. Uh, challenge, challenge would be related to that, probably, um, to be more of a community. Now, a lot of people have come to St. Matt's because they like the community, they say. Uh, the International Evangelical Church is a thousand strong and huge and they find St. Matthew's a bit more accessible. 
but I think I I think it wouldn't be unfair to say that it's it's a good community if you're a family with children. But if you're pre-family or older, it's actually not a great community. So I'm meeting with a young man tonight, a young American who's been here working for a company and is moving away to uh, another part of Africa. And he had said to me, oh, I've actually felt quite lonely here mm. um, because there isn't much going on for people of that age group. So on the one level, we're a community which works for some people, but we're not a great community for the breadth of people, perhaps. Interesting. And I think probably, you know, being a Ferengi, that's their word for people from the West, also makes it easier. I think they find it easier than expatriate Africans. Right. So another encouragement was I was invited round by a Tanzanian and a Ugandan family over Christmas. And that was beginning to get to know that yeah. community better. So that was an encouragement as well. That's but I suppose a prayer need coming out of that would be to say, we desperately need to restart home groups. But I don't feel it's for me to start them. I'm praying that the desire to start them will emerge from the church family. And talking about the wider diocese, which you've had almost a week to get to know. So, I mean, you'll have lots of experience. Yeah. Uh, wider diocese. Well, my first experience, so we are all of Ethiopia except Gambella. Gambella is where most of the Anglicans are, partly largely because of refugees coming in who then did evangelize locally. So there's an indigenous church now, but uh, began by refugees. And the rest of Ethiopia, and the main place where there are virtually the only place where there are Anglican churches at the moment, is around Asosa, which is a city uh, um, to the north of Gambela. So it's adjacent to the Republic of Sudan, what we might call North Sudan, rather than the new country of South Sudan. Yeah. That means that those in the camps are more likely to be Muslim background believers uh, from a quite a bigger variety of languages. So I was bouncing it up. I think there are seven different language churches within the camps. Wow. Amongst themselves, Arabic may well be the lingua franca because of North Sudan Republic and because that part, that federal state, Beni Shangul Gumuz of Ethiopia, tends to be Muslim dominated and Arabic speaking. Right. So, so, and most of our churches are in refugee camps there. So I've got a lot to learn. I, I first visited them a year ago with Bishop Anthony when they hadn't had a, an Episcopal visit for four or more years because of covid and all sorts of things so they were very excited when we arrived and we got out of this three-wheeled tuk-tuk so i get out first and there's a crowd of about 150 people at the at the entrance of the camp and they all start cheering <laughs> and i had to say then no 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 he's the bishop <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it was a wonderful a joyous occasion where they marched us dancing down to their church for a service yeah. that was my introduction to the yeah, to the life in the camps. Uh, I can't imagine church in refugee camp because you think of it being so transitory. But some of these camps have mm. been there for a long time, haven't they? Yes. And I mean, in a way, that's one of the struggles for them. You know, they may have been here 20 years or um, hoping for resettlement, not mm. feeling there's a way back, but not feeling there's a way on. So it's not easy for them. How should we be praying for you? regarding that side of your ministry? I'm sort of really giving myself up to Easter to try to get to know people and know the job, particularly the clergy. So I've got to know them a little bit, the, 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 particularly the five clergy in the camps. Mm. Um, so pray that I would have access because at times they haven't allowed us in. Right. We think it's sensitivities because there was uh, the World Food Programme and USAID suspended food deliveries because of some of it was not ending up where it was meant to end up uh, earlier last year. So for six months, some of these camps had no rations. Right. And they I think it's they didn't want Westerners finding out about that. So right. a prayer would be that we would have good access and good relationships with the people who run the camps. Um, the uh, area dean, Deng Mark, who is an Ethiopian citizen of Nua heritage, he uh, is in America at the moment, visiting visiting his sister that he hasn't seen for 33 years. I just imagine that. When I met my sisters this weekend, I thought, imagine not seeing them for 33 years. So I don't want to do an official visit until he's back. 
But what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll call I'll I'll call the clergy to Asosa Town, and just meet with them. So at least I begin to get to know them. Uh, one of the features at the moment is all this has to be done by flying, because the roads aren't safe because of various insurgencies and so on. So it makes it a bit more expensive. And at the moment there isn't a budget for the bishop, let alone a travel budget. So that's, I've got to sort of work that all all that sort of stuff out somehow. Sorry, perhaps one other thing. One other thing is. In the in the the clergy who are more based in Addis, one of the questions is how are they best um, placed for their gifts and their experience, and there may need to be some changes. But again, I'm giving myself to Easter to talk with them and find out, yeah, where what's the best way in which they can be put? Where can they be put that would best use their gifts and passions? So you came from Germany. You came here. You took all this time adjusting there was plenty to do anyhow you've taken on this new role how can we pray for you martin i think it probably is the obvious things you know um godliness wisdom and discernment a lot of decisions which won't be particularly easy or popular i think and in, in terms of particularly in terms of deployment um uh keeping on top of the admin load while still running st matt's so for the year and a half until the election, I'm staying on as rector of St. Matt's. I think if I were elected bishop, you know, in the, for a longer period, we would probably need to think about getting someone else for St. Matt's. Yeah. Just that St. Matt's, you could pray that St. Matt's doesn't suffer. They may profit, I think, because they'll have a variety of different preachers a bit more. And some locums, I hope, will come in. So that's actually not a bad thing. Martin, you've just had your family with you. Thank you for taking mm. time to be with us. Really interesting. And I'm sure the people that pray will find this engaging, but also will feed their prayers. So thanks for taking the time. And thank you so much for feed, feeding the prayer. We need it much, very much. Okay.